Can you say who you are and your age? I'm Michael and I'm 38 years old. Michael, you've had a journey with both alcohol and uh, sexual addiction. Could you tell us a bit about the journey that you've been on? Um, yeah, so um, I uh, realised towards the end of my 20s that I uh, had certain compulsive behaviours, patterns in my life which um, had come to a head and had really started to interfere with my ability to function. Um, and I started to find ways to control or, or find a solution to these problems so that I could have peace and, and live a relatively happy, happy and normal life because those behaviours, uh, including alcohol and um, sec my sexual behaviour, were, were preventing me from um, finding any peace or, or from being happy or even being able to function in terms of, you know, making a living, supporting myself. Have you learnt anything about the relationship between those two things? Um, so, um, I have discovered on my journey that um, there are, so the, the, the behaviours um, whether it's alcohol or, or, or sexual acting out or other behavioural addictions as they're sometimes called, like shopping or, or whatever it may be, all come from the same place. They're all um, expressions or symptoms of a deeper rooted spiritual problem, a spiritual malaise. So. In your journey, what have you learnt in terms of trying to turn that around? Well, uh, I've been very lucky in that I've been helped by others who've, who've gone before me. Um, and I've learnt things about myself. Uh, I, I've discovered, to some extent, certainly the reasons why I was behaving in those ways, uh, what the drivers were. And more than that, I've been given, I've been shown solutions, so new ways to live, um, particularly around alcohol, um, that mean that I no longer feel drawn to those types of behaviours in the way that I used to. So specifically for alcohol, um, on the, around the sexuality thing, that's that's a it's, it's a fresher experience. It's, I've I've made you know less progress there, I would say. So what is motivating you to um, seek solutions around the conflict that you experience in the area of sexuality? If I was satisfied and happy and um, had a sense of peace, then I wouldn't be on this journey. Uh, it's because I've experienced the opposite. Um, the way that I have lived my life and my behaviours around my sexuality, I'm not satisfied. Um, they haven't brought me happiness. Um, 20 years ago when I was in my late teens, um, I thought that certain things would bring me happiness. And I really believed that. And I've discovered a couple of decades later that that wasn't the case. And that the way that I've been doing things um, just doesn't work. And um, more than not working, it actually leads to profound uh, depression and um, it's not a sustainable way of living for me. What would you say to people who feel that um, what you have experienced is largely because of societal attitudes to uh, homosexuality? I don't live in an environment where attitudes towards gay people or homosexuality are hostile. And I, and I never really have experienced that to any great degree. I'm very lucky. I have very supportive friends and family. Um, and in my work, I've never experienced discrimination on those grounds. Um, I'm very lucky where I live. I am accepted for who I am. And specifically with regard to sexuality, I, am, I don't experience discrimination. What would your goal be? Well, I suppose the ultimate goal is, is peace, inner peace. A feeling that um, I am at one with 
the universe and um, with my fellow human beings and, 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 and you know every, all the creatures of the earth, I want to be at one and at peace. What do you think the most important thing is that you've learnt so far? I've learnt that the way that I have behaved in, in my life, in the past more so, perhaps slightly less so now, has been driven by um, self-seeking and uh, a lot of my problems came out of the fact that um, I was very self-centred and I still can be sometimes. Um, I always thought of myself first and I didn't think enough about others. And that, um, I learned that by, in, in my um, successful attempts to, to overcome alcohol, uh, addiction to alcohol um, and other things. And um, also I've learned that there are certain aspects to me, uh, certain elements of my personality which are um, exaggerated to a greater degree than in perhaps the average person, which give rise to a desire to um, engage in certain behaviours, act out in a certain way. And that um, I've been given, I found a, a spiritual solution, which involves relying on uh, some power greater than myself, which means that I no longer need to reach out to those destructive behaviours um, and a, a, a massive part of, of the progress that I've made has been trying to think of others instead of myself and trying to help others in some way. Michael, there'll, there'll be other young men and women who experience similar issues in their struggle with both areas. If you could share with them what advice or what suggestions would you give to them? Um, well, I don't think I'm qualified to give advice, but um, I can talk about my own experience and suggest things that might help people. Um, I would say that if, if anyone is dissatisfied with their life with, and feels trapped in certain behaviours, as I have, um, that it doesn't have to be that way and um, there, is, there are options, um, you know, whether it's alcohol or, or other behaviours or, or sex, sexual behaviours, that there, there are solutions out there um, and that you don't have to live that way. And um, if you look for the solutions, um, I believe that they can be found. I certainly have. I'm not saying I've got all the answers at all, but I've found um, help, which means that I don't have to live um, imprisoned in those old behaviours. Is there anything else you would like to say? People don't have to be alone. What I've found in the issues that I've faced is that there is immense value in trying to cultivate uh, deep and meaningful connections to others. Um, as opposed to, for example, superficial connections or trying to find connection to alcohol or destructive behaviours. And that um, a huge part of the progress that I believe I've been able to make has been in cultivating true relationships in the first instance with um, people around me but in a wider sense to um, the universe as a whole. For some people, they would call that God. But uh, to the whole universe. Thank you very much, Michael.